What up, fight fans? Main man, main man, back at it. Y'all know how I get down. We talking boxing. Well, shout out to Sean Showtime Porter for defeating Adrian the Problem Broner. Uh, they gave him the unanimous decision, ladies and gentlemen, as did I. Uh, very good fight. Um, it was a tough fight to judge in the earlier portions, but eventually Sean Porter started to pull away throughout the fight. Great game plan. Hats off to Kenny Porter, uh, his father, man. They worked on a good game plan, man. They really totally fooled the shit out of Adrian Bronner, fooling the camp of Adrian Bronner. Ladies and gentlemen, 75% of Adrian Bronner's game plan, as I said in my predicted video, was for, eight, uh, for, show, for Sean Porter to be drained. Al Heyman fucked up the church's money when he took that rehydration clause out of that fight, ladies and gentlemen. Believe it or not, the most detrimental part of the catchweight, and it was not detrimental to Sean Porter, it was detrimental to Adrian Bronner. The detrimental portion of it was the rehydration part. We seen Sean Porter come in the ring, ladies and gentlemen, at 161 pounds, clearly over the 155 rehydration limit at the time. And we seen Adrian Bronner come in at 157. So, Adrian, uh, so Sean Porter was not drained. And on top of that, the way he fooled the shit out of the camp of Adrian Bronner, who originally wanted this fight at 142, he fooled the shit out of them because they thought he was going to struggle and make weight. Sean Porter was already preparing for a fight. He was already contractually obligated to fight on June 20th anyway. So he had an opponent to fight. His opponent just back because the opponents that they had for him, uh, they just changed the opponent to Adrian Bronner because it was told to Al Heyman he needed a big fight on June 20th, given the money and the ratings that they're losing with NBC. And he put this together. Bronner wasn't happy about this fight, ladies and gentlemen. He didn't want to fight Showtime Sean Porter. It was clear. He couldn't face that man. He couldn't look him in the face. He couldn't look him in the eyes. He couldn't. He had to run around doing all that coon shit to cover up for the simple fact that he was nervous and he was scared. I said this shit in my prediction video. This is nothing that I'm coming up with right now, ladies and gentlemen. I've been saying this. Now, I am not a hard critic, critic on Adrian Broner as most because I understand what he's doing to sell tickets. But the fact still remains, he flew at high heights by building up and talking so much shit, man. This is the second time that Adrian Bronner was on the verge of being a pay-per-view star, ladies and gentlemen. Most people don't get this many chances. First time was when at the Marcos Maidana fight. When he was world champion, he was flying high, ego at an all-time high. He talked his way into filling seats, and so he was talking his way into becoming a pay-per-view star, and bam, it was taken away from him with a loss. He gets he gets back, he starts to work and get his confidence back with these Molina fights and uh, the Taylor fight, and, you know, those, those were lower-tier fighters, and he was kind of convincing a lot of portions of boxing fans that he was actually doing something. He was working his way to almost becoming a pay-per-view star again. So the cornery shit, I don't usually jump on him much much about because I understand why he was doing it. Though he had lost to McDonough and took on three tomato cans almost, uh, I don't consider Taylor a tomato can, so I'll say a couple tomato cans. Since he did that, you know, he, he convinced people that he was an elite fighter again. And if he would have beat Porter, he would have been there. The fact of the matter is, ladies and gentlemen, Adrian Bronner, though he may progress and he's great at selling tickets and he's great at selling, you know, fights, he's piss poor when it comes to making adjustments in the ring. The same Adrian Bronner that we've seen, the punch output did not come up, ladies and gentlemen. The footwork was there, but it was not there for the right reasons. He was moving to get away from Porter, to just... To, to, to run away from Porter, not to lure a Porter into traps, not to not to, to, to reset Porter. No, none of that. We didn't see him turning Porter at all. This Adrian Bronner is the same Adrian Bronner that we've always seen. No progression, which is why I definitely think that Mike Stafford needs to go. This is the furthest he can take Adrian Bronner. He cannot handle this kid ego-wise no more, and he can't handle this kid as far as telling him what to do. You know, the thing that sucks about this PBC shit is that they don't give us much in-the-corner interaction. 
Haven't seen much of that. And But the little that they did give us, I did recall Mike Stafford just telling Adrian Broner, you got to change it up, man. You can't win fighting the way that you're fighting. Adrian Broner dug deep. That check hook that he knocked down Porter with in the 12th round, man, he was aiming for that punch the entire fucking fight. He was bankrolling on that. Between that one punch and hoping that Sean Porter was drained and would tire out, that was Adrian Broner's game plan. And it was piss poor. Sean Porter, man, I'm very impressed with his jab, how he was landing the jab on Broner. I did not think that would be an X factor in this fight. Most people did not think that Sean Porter was going to be able to box with Adrian Broner. I was one of those people, to be honest with you. But the jab, all I kept saying the entire fight was I wish Sean Porter would just double up that jab. Double it up and get to the inside. But that one jab was phasing Broner. It was landing. And then it would get Porter to the inside. So Adrian Broner, man, I don't know where he goes from here. Took the bitch made route, not showing up at the press conference afterwards, but could talk all his bullshit. You know, I don't know where he goes from here, man. All I know is this kid has pissed off a lot of people. And evidently, Sean Porter did not take none of this shit personally. He understands the business. Uh, but his kid has pissed off a lot of people, man. Uh, I don't know. There's rumors going around that Heyman is pissed off at him, which I didn't truly believe at first. Shout out to 78 Sports TV. He was, ladies and gentlemen, the first one to drop that bit of knowledge. And uh, the thing is, is that I was reluctant to believe it because I thought all the terms in this fight was going to Adrian Brana. The catchweight, the rehydration shit, um, the glove thing. I thought everything was going towards Broner. The, the cuddly, buttly shit between him and Mayweather. But we seen Al Heyman. You know, you ever see, remember that, that game they had, used to have called Jenga, I think, where you remove the pieces and hope the thing doesn't fall? Al Heyman removed the one piece from the fight, uh, from that fight that made Adrian Bronner's Jenga come tumbling down. You know what I mean? And that was that rehydration clause. And he knew it. He knew that Porter was walking around at roughly 150, 152 already. Not his usually 160 plus. He was already trimming up for a fight. And he knew that the big thing was Porter rehydrating. And that was the one piece that was pulled that was very detrimental to Adrian Bronner. Very detrimental. Bronner looked so big in the ring. He looked bigger than Porter, man. I don't know how much of that was, was muscle and fat or, or water. But the power was not there, ladies and gentlemen. Broner with the excessive holding. This was a major issue throughout the fight. Hell, way more than Kell Brook did. And then on top of that, wasn't doing a good job at containing him at that. Porter was bucking and bucking, throwing him body shots. Broner was fatigued mid, not even midway through this fight. He was fatigued. What the fuck was going on in Broner's training camp? I'm calling for Mike Staff Stafford and Broner to, to, to part ways. It has to happen. He needs someone who's going to, he needs, Broner needs a disciplinarian, someone who's going to teach him not only the fundamentals, but teach him adjustments. I recommend such as a, a, a Virgil Hunter. That's always usually my first guy. He's such a good disciplinarian. I recommend, recommend a guy like him. But uh, I don't know what goes on for Broner. Uh, he is not, ladies and gentlemen, an elite fighter. We need to get it in our head. No matter how good a game they can talk, he is not an elite fighter, especially at welterweight. He still has, is not even proven at 140. He hasn't even fought the best at 140. And he wants to fight some of the top-notch fighters at 147. I don't understand the direction of this kid's career. Who's guiding this kid? Heyman is guiding this kid. Oh, my gosh. He hasn't fought the Lucas Matisse's. He hasn't fought the Lamont Petersons. He didn't fight Danny Garcia. He didn't fight Tomas Delorme. He didn't fight uh, Terrence Crawford. These are all fights that Adrian Bronner needs to get under his belt before he's even considered to be worthy enough of a conversation again, in my opinion. Not even facing the cameras after you lost. What a bitch made route. First time, maybe it was semi-understandable because he had a broken jaw. Marcos maybe Donald broke that fucking jaw. So he might didn't want to show the world his fucking swollen up face. But this particular time, he just got beat down fair and square and I knew he was on his way to a loss 
because the same shit that we seen in the McDonald fight, we seen in this fight. Him pleading to the refs. I, you know, him constantly on the fucking mat. I ruled that fourth down. They come out that fourth round shit was not a slip, ladies and gentlemen. When his glove touched the fucking canvas, that was a knockdown. Now, I did not have this fight won by Porter by a big margin, quite honestly. I had it going into the 11th, an even fight. Not going to do a round by round. But I had it going into the 11th, an easy fight. I mean, an even fight. Uh, once they took that point away from Broner, which was long overdue, it should have been taken two rounds ago, uh, that made it a 10-8 round, and Broner came back on that 12th and made it another 10-8 round. But I thought Sean Porter won the 11th. And that, to me, was the big X factor. And uh, I gave it to Sean Porter by one round. So my score was nearly as like the judges. Some people may score this a bit different. They see in the aggression, but I seen a lot of swinging. I did see a lot of recklessness still from Sean Porter. A lot of recklessness that if he was in there with another fighter, he would have been getting tagged up. He would have been getting tagged up crazy. But given in there, he was in there with one punch, one punch, uh, low power Adrian Bronner. Uh, this is what happened. Now some people say. If Bronner would have let his hands go early on in his fight, he would have had much more success, which I definitely agree. That go back goes back to the punch output being brought up. Uh, I definitely agree. That shot he caught him within the 12th, he could have been landed a shot like that throughout the fight. But anyway, Sean Porter, man, uh, his future looks bright. Please, I hope they stop mentioning Earl Spence with Sean Porter. It's very disrespectful. I don't know why uh, Floyd Mayweather thinks he's, you know, I don't know what kind of game he's playing by not wanting to mention Sean Porter as an opponent. Uh, I think this win definitely, I mean, he got Marcos Maidana, two Floyd fights. Why couldn't he get Sean Porter a fight? Uh, he's not evidently trying to face Keith Thurman. Not evidently. I don't, And the thing I find suspicious about all this shit that Floyd Mayweather's running around talking, he's not mentioning Kel Brook, ladies and gentlemen. Keep that in mind. He's running around here talking to Andre Berto, Kareem Mayfield shit. Uh, no one wants to see that. So he's not mentioning Kell Brook. And I find that quite suspicious. But anyway, Sean Porter should go on to get the big names. Keith Thurman, uh, he's already been defeated by Kell Brook. Maybe a rematch is in, in play, who knows. Uh, bring on Amir Khan. Bring on the big names, man, at 147 for Sean Porter. I would love to see him in there with the best. He is the, uh, one of the more elite fighters at 147. Give the man his due. I uh, hats off to him be, for being the ultimate gentleman in this fight, for keeping his composure. Shout out to him for just being an ultimate professional in this fight. And a uh, shout out to his daddy for just uh, keeping his composure and showing the discipline, even though I do, I do agree with Broner. Kenny Porter need to lean off the cameras. But that's Sean Porter's decision. But shout out to Sean Porter. Great fight. Great, great game plan. Uh, it's good to see that how he carries himself and how he carries uh, the, the respect for the fight game. And maybe a lot of the younger fighters can take note of that. So uh, that was my post-fight thoughts immediately after the fight, man. I'll probably revisit this, uh, see what, whatever happens with Adrian Bronner. But uh, as I predicted, Adrian Bronner, low punch output, piss poor foot movement, uh, lack of power, uh, total, and lack of game, lack of adjustment. Those all proved to be very detrimental. Hoping too much on that catch weight, very detrimental. And Al Heyman, last minute rehydration, uh, added, 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 dropped that rehydration clause. Very detrimental. So, to the next video, it's your main man, made man. I see y'all. Sorry for the long video, but this fight was like, wow. Peace out.